Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news, discussion, and of course, a whole lot of opinions on Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and I'm still sick. And joining me, as always, is Ian. Hey, I'm Weary Rider. Also joining me is Ben. Hey guys, I'm Overlord Jeebus. And we also have Evgeny. Hello, I'm Argent. And lastly, but certainly not least, is Rosemary. Hello, I'm K-Myth. And I'm Chaos. Uh, last time we didn't get to do any words of Brandon, and that's what we're gonna do uh, from Jordan Khan. So, we have a lot of them. So, <laughs> we have, we're, we have we're, 27 you're, you're pages of them. <laughs> yes, yes. So, that, that'll probably <laughs> be two podcasts. Just, you know, uh, but we'll see. And Evgeny, you have one that you want to start with, I think. <laughs> I, the greatest of all words of Brandon. <laughs> it, is, it is certainly up there. Um, yes. As, as, I, as I read this, dear, dear listener, I would like you to, um, to think <laughs> that these were the very first words I and Brandon exchanged at this Jardin Con. <laughs> it was it was possibly the first time he had seen me there uh it is, it is certainly not a thing i communicated with him and i and i and i took um it, it, some some effort in in hiding myself as as we ran into each other on the lobby and so after a panel of his i i and a fellow sharder approached him and and brandon sanderson's very first words to me were, oh, they let you in, did they? <laughs> <laughs> I've, it, 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 yeah, he, yeah. So, um, you can, he you can go listen to you. that. He, he does know me and he did this thing where, uh, he, he didn't just extend his arm for a handshake. He did a swooping, you know, extending, uh, friendly, Aww. um, Aww handshake um but it was it was funny and you can listen to to the outrage in my voice <laughs> as i respond to him on arcanum wob that coppermine.net yes and you can find all of these there um oh one other thing this is going to be a full cosmere spoilery podcast because uh we got stuff we, we got we got a lot to talk about a lot to talk about. This is this is the con where all the nerds are at. Oh yeah, so, all the best you, nerds. Yeah, except me. <laughs> I could have gone. I'm going to a convention later this month, and I'll give you the skinny on that one. Have you know? <laughs> You've got to go and uh, beat some of these wobs. You're a tall order. Yes. <laughs> yep. So Ian, why don't you do this first one? Okay. So Argent asked. So Argent asks. Can shards manifest a physical body that can actually interact with the physical realm? Brandon, if they wanted to, yes. Argent, was that the thing that Odium did at the end of Oathbringer, or was that just a projection? Brandon, um, it starts to be really difficult to define when you're getting to these points, because they are generally are, they generally are such massive wells of investiture themselves that it's like, is this thing they're creating like they are kind of, you know, then bell bending the three realms around the like space time with lots of gravity. So is that a projection? Is that a real thing? Does it matter? Does that definition, Argent? Oh, at that point, they are almost the same thing, right? Brandon, yes, exactly. Oh, bravo for reading Brandon's very ums and, 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 and ahs and you know. Yeah, that's right. That was, that was good. So <laughs> my 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 take on that which which obviously you can you can see in this is that um uh, so let's let's talk about that scene at the end of all Ring, right odium seemingly manifests a physical body yes. um what i what i under so think of it as a as a perpendicularity almost a little bit mm -hmm. or or if we want to go with a more physical metaphor imagine like three sheets of paper stacked on top of one another and that's um, and those are the three realms and yeah. perpendicularities yeah. and shards alike, uh, when they manifest, uh, in the physical, they are, they're like puncturing a hole in those, in those three and kind of squishing them together. And, and is that squish 
a hole in 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 the sheet in the first sheet in all of the sheets like it it kind of belongs to all of them right you have yeah. the spiritual energy the investiture and and but it's also in the cognitive and it's also in the physical it's it's kind of the point where the three realms converge yeah and and that's what i tried to convey in like seven words uh <laughs> And and Brandon did oh. seem to agree. And so, since I'm contractually obligated to bring this up, what we're talking about here, that's what should be called avatars, not this freaky other thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ian has a long-standing uh, hatred of the, the word avatar in how it is currently being used. Correct. But that's, uh, that's, that's what's in the text. It's... They're using it in world. It's hard to argue. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I could argue all I want. It is. Like, it is a just, very. Yeah, I mean, we're just impressed a, by the effort that you put into it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I I do sympathize with. Yes, this this is what in many other worlds would be called an avatar. Uh in this this is actually a really important question because ruin couldn't really manifest very well, uh, unless people mm -hmm. were were spiked. Right, and so there is a big question on when shards can manifest in the physical realm because it doesn't feel like there's that thing they're always able to do. Um, that's probably enough of a subject for a podcast in and of itself, right? But that's kind of what this is getting at. Like, did Odium physically manifest? Did he need the Everstorm there to do that? Probably. Eh, it kind of seems like I... it. But... I wonder if it's dangerous for them to do that. That's what I was just thinking. Because yeah. they're not just sending, you know, a projection. They are, for all intents and purposes, there. Um, and now, like, would it be incredibly difficult for someone to do anything to a shard? Yeah, of course. But now they have well, a, a locus. Now they have a nexus. A little bit where... more vulnerable. Yep. Yep. So if, if endowment took a stroll, and and Odium was there, she could have pulled a Kelsier on him and decked him. Um, see, the thing is with that is when Ruin manifested air quotes to Vin through the spike, not really manifesting in the physical the same, right? Yeah. Uh, it's been described like uh, it, Ruin couldn't send a lot of thoughts to Vin unless he was there, right? Mm -hmm. And that didn't seem particularly dangerous, but there was this restriction that Ruin just couldn't talk to people uh, and, unless they were spiked. Like, you, you saw that at the end of here, or at the end of the Erto part of uh, yeah. Hero of Ages where uh, Quellian hears uh, Spook, uh, hears Ruin and Spook hears Ruin, but then you know, because this also not, ruins there. Not just ruin, but this also raises questions about preservation. Because preservation, so ruin was able to listen, uh, talk to people through their mind, and uh, no, the other way around. Preser pre or preservation, preservation, listens. Sorry, preservation, preservation listens. Preservation, preservation listens. Yeah, preservation. That's what I was saying. Yeah, the ruin can oh, talk sorry. to people in their mind, and preservation listens. But if a shard is just able to manifest a. I'm just going to call it an avatar. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If it manifests an avatar in the physical realm, then that restriction on preservation where he can only listen, if if he was alive, he could just if he could just then come down and talk to someone using their ears, then that doesn't seem like that big of a deal anymore. But then you also had preservation of ruin constantly counteracting what each other did. Yeah. Yes, that yeah. is actually leads right into my point. It's that... Like, yeah. Part of the reason they couldn't manifest like Odium is because like they are in direct conflict with each other, and yeah. doing so mm -hmm. would open them up to being destroyed, which is exactly what happens to preservation. Yes, preservation appears to a lend in Hero yeah. of Ages, and that's the point where like r ruin Just, deals the fatal yeah. blow. Sure. So. But I don't it, know why cultivation didn't take her opportunity to do something to Odium during Yeah, because Thalen this City. is not one of those, like, because Odium mentions, oh, you know, like, Odium can't do too much because that would invite a strike from cultivation. The Stormfather yeah. says that. Yeah. Uh, so this seems like a big deal, but it, 
maybe the Skadrial thing is just because they're such in direct conflict and this yeah. isn't quite the same sort of thing. Yeah. There are a lot of funky things with Skadrial. Yeah. Also the fact that both shards were severely weakened by the time the story takes place. That is very true, yeah. Uh, Though, I don't know like, if severely weakened is accurate. Weaker than normal. We we did mention this, but like Odium showed up like in the middle of the Everstorm, like which is yeah, the right. center of his power. Mm-hmm. That yes. might affect things. Like if Odium yeah. just like showed up elsewhere, like that might be more open. Like yeah. right. cultivation shows up and odium doesn't strike because that's at a center yeah. of cultivation's power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Mm-hmm. Let's go with it. Yeah, yeah, I'm down with that. Cool. So the next one has uh, the questioner asking, can a higher spren leave Roshar? And Brandon simply replies, they do not know how to right now. Which is pretty crazy considering how long they've existed. It is for a long time. Well, that's not what they said. It's like they don't know how to do right now. That doesn't preclude them knowing in the past and losing that knowledge. Well, I guess that's true. And it also is possible that they just can't at all and he's just being coy about it. And I, like, I, mean, I mm, it is because, something Brandon has talked about in the past getting getting Spren off of Roshar uh, because of because they're tied to the, to, the, to Shadesmar uh, the whole, because they have connection, connection and all of that. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and so what happens, you know, because Shadesmar is more or less two dimensional projection of uh, of the physical realm, and so it has it has edges, right? It is <laughs> it is a flat Earth. Yeah. So if you if you just walk around the equator of the physical Roshar, like how, how does that look like in Shadesmar when you get to when your sprint gets to the edge, does it reset back on the other end? We don't know. I mean, but it's, we, a, we, it's a wonky we've thing. Seen Kelsier try to move outside mm-hmm. of yes. Scadrial's influence when he was a cognitive shadow, and I imagine we're looking at very similar phenomenon here, except it may be even more yeah. difficult for Spren to leave than it would have been for Kelsier. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And Brandon has like compared this to cognitive shadows before, like, and it's possible for cognitive shadows. Like we see that with Vasher, who like was able to get yeah. off of Nolfus. So yeah, yeah, but he he does he does gain a body. So like it yeah. could be like having that physical tie, or that tie to the physical realm is is what would do it. So maybe Kelsey or maybe it would be easier now, yeah. but. Yeah, I think it's a lot it's, it's easier for your standard world hopper to move around than it would be for a cognitive shadow or a spren. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah, for sure. what I'm what I'm interested in right now is let's say you are let's say you're Kaladin, right? And okay. and you hop on the Eurythiru spaceship. Yep. And <laughs> just not a thing. Just it's a point of order. But you know. <laughs> yes. Go on. And you summon Seal as a blade. And the spaceship goes off. I think Syl will stay with him as long as she is maintaining her physical form. And then if if he dismisses her, he'll pro- uh, she'll probably get like tugged back to to Roshar's well, Shadesmar. It it depends heavily on whether the connection to her home planet is stronger than the Nahel bond itself. Uh, yeah, the sure. Nahel Bond may override that. We just don't know because we haven't seen a Radiant try to world hop that we know of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, additionally, well, how about we do this next one, Rosemary? Because I, I feel like this is relevant to exactly what we're kind of getting at. Yeah. All right. So it says, um, do dead eyes disappear in Shadesmar when they are summoned to the physical realm? And Brandon's response is, Yes, mostly. So that makes you wonder what bit of them is left there that you can still see. Well, I mean, for, first, firstly, thank you for uh, for asking this. Yes, uh, Arjun, you're welcome. Because this is a great question that we were thinking about on the podcast. Yeah, we specifically. Uh, it was I remember the podcast because we specifically said, "Hey, if anyone wants to ask this." I I, well, I may have picked that up from the podcast. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah, <laughs> perfect. Uh, the the thing with this is that like the 
the dead eye don't need to be where the owner is although the dead eye continues to like try to move towards its owner so there was this question of hey if you summon the blade what happens with the, the, the dead eye and Shadesmar? what what happens and so maybe it's like they get like really like translucent and so they're but they're they're still tied to the cognitive a bit yeah. Like, yeah, I was wondering I, if it's a similar thing to how Spren and Shazmar appear in the physical realm, where you know the 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 anticipation Spren, it's just their tongue appears in the physical realm when they are uh, sense anticipation. So, like when you summon a blade, just like a so there's example, a foot sum- still in the cognitive. Yeah, so it's like um, if you were to summon, say, a wind Spren, a dead eye wind Spren, uh, sorry, honor Spren. Um, in the thing, you'd be ending up with like what would look like a wind spren in the physical realm, but you'd see that in the this is something like like a little representation of them, similar to how you have a representation oh, of God. the the spren and shazma in the physical realm, yeah. but just the other way around. I am with Eric on this one. I've also imagined this as well. You have an outline or a translucent or like a ghostly image of the dead eye stay in shazma, and then it just returns. Back. Something like that. Something like, like that. I think I like, like, a, a token they, presence. Yeah. Enough Maybe. to remember where it is in mm-hmm. the cognitive realm. And and so I imagine for someone like Syl, who's obviously alive and also transitioned into the. Yeah, Syl is in right. the physical. Live sprint blades but, are a bit different here. Yeah, okay. but uh, they're traveling with their uh, their person. Yeah. Right? Uh, and so, if Kaladin did go on a spaceship and go somewhere else, mm. I feel like because uh, Shadesmar is tied to location and your uh, that Spren is moving with you, that I think that would be okay for a Spren yeah. to move off world like that. Yeah, maybe. Like just due to like location. Now for a stuff. dead shard blade, the bond is is somewhat different than than a full hell bond. Yeah, so that's gonna, true. So that, who yeah. knows what's gonna happen if you try and move mm-hmm. off world with a, with a, a dead spren blade? Will it go with you or will it stay behind? Will you eventually oh. get to the point where you're too far out to be able to to summon it? There's... Brandon has actually talked about this, where it's like yeah. you can always summon the blade, but. The farther you get, the longer it will yeah, take. Yeah, that's right. I, I was going to say, it's a the, the specific word of Brandon where he spoke yes. about this, I was there for. The yeah, 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 way he yeah. said it, it, he said he basically said if you were to go off-world and summon a blade, it would take like several minutes to reach you because essentially it has to travel through the speed that, like, it has to travel to you. So, but that through never, the in the cognitive realm, but that never uh, really, like, Matters too much matters. on Roshar, Roshar because it's so close. Um, but he didn't say if you have to do something special to be able to summon your blade on another planet. He just True. said if you summon your blade on another planet. Yeah. But he didn't True. necessarily whether you can. It's just that easy way you can just go to another planet and still summon your blade fine. Mm-hmm. But just takes a few minutes. Yep. Yeah. So weird, weird mechanics going on there. There is something Indeed. weird. Yeah. You know, we could see this if we like go to Ashen or Braze. I imagine we'll see them eventually. Oh, yeah, sure. Stormlight yeah. Archive, right? Yeah, eventually they, they matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, like so we might see some of that. Like, man, it took took a while for this blade to get here. That's yeah, but I, I don't think it would take as long for like Ashen or Braze. Oh no, it would take no, more but than, it would like take eleven or twelve. Well, zero, it's more than ten heartbeats. Well, yeah, right? so yeah. if if we are, I mean, obviously Cosmere is is much different, right? But light takes what is it like eight minutes to get yeah, between yeah. the sun and and the earth. Yep. And yep. and so going from you know uh, the sun and 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 let's say to Mars or to Venus, it's still going to be within within minutes, right? It's not yeah. it's not the difference between. Ten heartbeats and eight heartbeats, or yeah. something like that. So it's gonna be but it's gonna like, be a significant. It it's um speed of light through the cognitive realm, correct? Yeah, not the physical. Yeah. Realm. So it's like yeah. that's going to shrink the distance. What, what, whatever more. it means, yes. It's greater than ten. Greater than, greater than, than but, ten. But like, but like, if your planets, if the planets are close to each other on in their orbits, then it will be like barely any effect, and it will be a few seconds. But if they're on opposite sides of the star of like, what would we call the Rosharan star? Have we got a name for that? 
we don't have a name. Roshar. Right. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like <laughs> it's, it's probably Roshar. <laughs> and see, Roshar. if they're on the if they're on either side of the star, it will be like 10, 20 minutes. Well, to, to, for the light to reach them, we don't know how orbital me- mechanics affect the cognitive realm. We don't know how anything works, man. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're we're oh, let's welcome we're to Shardcast, where we don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. I mean, we really <laughs> yeah, is, is weird. It is. Uh, the next one we have is uh, Grace, the Gator Girl. Uh, she asks, "There's a character in Bands of Mourning named Cobb One B." And there's also a character named Cobb One B in uh, the Oathbringer epilogue. Are those two the same person, Brandon? Nope. Good question. Now so this, this is, is important because yes, Eric and I had this conversation about felt, thinking like, oh, yes. they're just two different people. I'll, I guess they're the same person. Like, we <laughs> need to ask that if there's a similar name in different places. That's an important thing to get on record. Everyone yeah, is a world hopper until proven otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So the questioner asks, can you hemolytically spike a high spread? I think they meant a true spread there, but <laughs> because yeah. high spread is a specific type of spread. But Brandon yes. says, yes, asterisk. It is it is one of the things that we did have um not problems with during during Jordan Khan, but a little bit of confusion with. They, they, there were several instances where people um used high sprint, pr- presumably with a with a space in between them, right? High sprint. For the higher uh, when, sprint. Right. Right. Yeah. When yeah. when they when they meant to say higher sprint or or sapient sprint or true sprint. Uh, so something as you as you read these ones, something to keep in mind. Yeah. Yes, not the specific type of spread that bonds skybreakers. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, but so, yeah, the uh, asterisk, asterisk usually uh, denotes that. It, it, yeah, but not probably not the way you think it works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. It's and... it's 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 always bothered me because it, the the magic is called hemology. And has always been represented to being really related to how blood works. I mean, if you keep the spikes That's in true. blood, they yeah. keep their charge. Um, and so, Spren don't have blood. So, how does that work, Brandon? I, so, I feel like fun fact. It, could, it would have to be like in the cognitive realm, mm-hmm. not in the physical. And and he has pretty said pretty much that. Uh, may, maybe even during Jordan Con, I'm not sure. Uh, but there was there was another question um, either that I that I heard or I read recently uh, where he does say, hey, can you spike Spren uh, because they have no body? And he's like, well, there is a place where they do have body. Uh, okay. oh, that wasn't in Arcanum, at least. Mm, Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. But but I, I've definitely seen an implication that that this is the case. But then I also apparently have dreams of of canonical wobs so whatever. <laughs> yes. yeah uh next word to brandon question why can't zahel or zael aka vasher on roshar sleep at night and brandon says well multiple reasons none of which are particularly pleasant he has a rough time with a lot of different things uh which as somebody who was on the panel listening to this brandon was being very intentionally very cagey and uh, Billy, the moderator on the panel, uh, jumps in and goes, uh, how many of those reasons would give rise to a bounty? Uh, to which Brandon cheekily responds, multiples depending on who's offering the bounty. Obviously represent, uh, referencing Azure, who is hunting someone that has a bounty. Yes. Yeah. So Vasher doesn't have insomnia. Yeah. No. Possibly. No. I mean, multiple reasons. But yeah, he done some bad things. So the next one has the question asking: Does the deterioration of Irithiru have anything to do with the fact that the sibling is asleep? To which Brandon replies, "Yes," which is a nice good confirmation. Good, good confirmation. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Okay. So so the next one, uh, someone asked um, exactly how turbulent is the cognitive round around cell. Chris seems to think it's rather difficult to travel to, but how difficult would it be for Hoyd to get through? 
And Brandon's response was, uh, how difficult would it be to get through to sell? How difficult would it be for Hoyd? I would say straining his resources and capacity. It's difficult for him, so take that as you will. But it's worth his effort, and he has done it numerous times. This one's really cool. Why yeah. is it worth his effort? What are you doing on sale, Hoyd? Yeah, well, that's why remember, there's lots he, of stuff he, on sale. He snuck there to, to steal the Moon Scepter, and he's obviously been doing something with that. Mm. Also, sells one of the most more populous Cosmere planets that we know. Like, there's lots of stuff that you would potentially want to do. And and given that this was the these are the first splinterings that Odium did, he might even be studying the effects of it. Alternatively, Very true. we know that Hoyd is desperately waiting for the invention of instant noodles, <laughs> and I'm pretty <laughs> sure that they have noodles on sale. So that that's not a joke, listeners. Just say it. He does yeah, in yeah. fact want I've, instant noodles. I, I've gotten branded to admit to me that that you know, sure, terterrace terrace food might involve noodles because I've asked him. Oh, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't sometimes know ask really bizarre questions. <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to know what terrace food was like. <laughs> Lots of goats, apparently. It, it, it is uh, very interesting, though, that uh, it strains his effort, but he can do it. So that kind of explains how he gets there. Yeah. But general person, it would not be right. And so, there. and so, this goes interestingly the other way. If it is very difficult for Hoyd to get to sell, it it might be very difficult for pretty much anyone else. Like, oh how, yeah, probably, how many yeah. how many people are up there on a power level with with Hoyd, right? Yeah. There, there's a later question further on in that talks about world hopping tourism that touches on this too. It's it's actually I'm glad question. you ask. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you say that, Rosemary, because that's exactly this next one. And oh, I, this one is so much fun that so I'm going to read the whole so thing. So good. Uh, questioner, we started out in the earlier books knowing that there's this Hoyt guy. He's a world hopper and world hoppers exist. And then we've kind of been given more and more. In Secret History, it said you'd be surprised about the economy you've ended by destroying the perpendicularity. What amount of people are traveling between worlds? Hundreds? Thousands? Billions? Brandon, thousands. Questioner, is it like a vacation or is it like... Brandon, well, I wouldn't call it vacationing. Questioner, is it the frontier or is it uh, uh, from where you could go? Brandon, it depends on the roadway. Let's say you look at frontier-era America. How hard was it to get to England? It was really far away, but it was uh, actually relatively safe and common to do this. How difficult was it to get to Boise, Idaho? That's harder, but you know how to do it. How easy was it uh, to get to, let's say, the Hawaiian Islands? You're starting to get into, like, the question comes here, certain pathways are more traveled. There are going to be caravans, there are going to be guides. There are going to be safe travels between certain places that are done commonly enough that if you are in the know and are in the right place, you can be like, I want to buy passage here. And you can go there, and you can have a reasonable expectation that you're going to uh, make it to where you're going. Other places you say, I want to go here, and they're like, yeah, I've known someone who tried that, and they never come, came back. Not taking you. So where you're going, where you're trafficking, Chris gives you some indication of which ones are easy to get to and which ones are commonly visited. I would recommend that if you go on vacation in the Cosmere, like, I want to go somewhere different, go to Nelthus. Nelthus is, a great, uh, is great to go to, right? They even have customs that you can go through, which is amazing. The, the reaction you, to the room on that one was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you can, like, arrive in things like this. Don't go to Cell. Cell is not good to go to. Cell is re really dangerous to go to. There's a dead shard, two of them, in the cognitive realm that will destroy you. Other places, Skadriel, used to be a lot easier to get to. Roshar, depends which area you're talking about. Sometimes it's pretty easy to go to. Those nice horn eaters will treat you like a god and feed you food. However, right now, might not be a good time to, uh, to try to visit Roshar. Oh, man. That I, is so great. I love this word of Brandon. I yes. love it. Yes. It, was, it was brilliant just standing there listening to it live. Too. I know, it's it amazing. One, uh, of my, one of my favorite things about it is just how much information he volunteered. I mean, like, <laughs> not, none of this is game-breaking, right? No. But it's just him 
standing there and and talking and talking and talking about stuff that he hasn't really talked about in the past is always we know so much we know experience. so much more As Cosmere now. customs yes <laughs> how did that develop that's crazy I've always imagined Shadesmar and the cognitive realm for all of the, the whole wider cosmic cognitive realm kind of being a bit abandoned. We've got like silver light here and there, and we've got this thing. But from the sound of things, there is a flourishing civilization going on in Shadesmar where you can just, you can turn up faces and be like, hey, I want to go here. And someone's like, yeah, hop in my Cosmere horse drawn carriage and like we'll go ride to <laughs> Nalthus and oh, you've got customs, anything to declare, you know, but you've got your silver light passport and it's great. I love it. I, it's, I really love this. There, there's, <laughs> there's so many implications here. The first implication is that Chris is kind of the frontiers person who will tell other people, yeah, you know, is he. Go here. Don't go here. Yeah. Do not do that. I, well, I feel like that's what the essays were for from Arcanum yeah. Unbounded. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man, what the essays Arcanum Unbounded are just a travel guide at your local, <laughs> you know, <laughs> holiday resort. Your local bookstore Hitch, in Silver Lake. Hitchhiker's <laughs> Guide to the Cos to Shades Mar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the other thing that I want to talk about is, like, customs on Nalthus. Uh, we know the five scholars traveled to Roshar, at least. Maybe they traveled elsewhere. Or, or some uh, of them did. Yes, a, a non-zero amount of them did. Vasher and Shashara definitely did. I, I'm just wondering how customs would develop, like, people being in the know, you know, about that. But presumably, maybe the five scholars, like, told people and, you know, mm -hmm. guarded whatever endowments perpendicularity is or whatever. Well, I it, wonder it how involved... Go ahead. Sorry. It, it helps that Nalthus is one of the more stable shard worlds. There hasn't been a lot of upheaval on a shardic level yeah, like you've seen true. on yeah. so many of the other planets. So yeah, that makes really that's a else. big junk of what makes it such a good place to go to is because you know that it's not going to, you know, break or it's not it been broken or in the process. Yeah, presumably, of yeah. Like you see on so many other, oh, no. other planets. Yeah. Oh no, it, something terrible is going to happen to Nalthus in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Maybe. We'll see. Um, but so it makes me wonder how involved is endowment herself in this customs? That's true. Because she is one of the more involved shards with her people. Like yeah. she, And also she one of the ones who are like, don't mess with other shards. Yeah. I like endowment. I like endowment. Do you have anything to declare like other investitors from other planets. I, I've, <laughs> Good talked, <sir. laughs> I've talked several times about how much I love the idea of doing really mundane things in the Cosmere, and one of my favorite ideas has always been going through an anything to declare, you know, filling out anything to declare form at a customs in, in Silverlight or something like that, where it's like, are you, are you immortal? Yes or no? If yes, please fill out how, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll not let you in on this place. So Nightblood, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. If if and, and this is because I I listened to the Nightblood podcast very recently. Oh, good. If Nightblood is Endowment's kind of super low key sneaky way of getting at Odium. Yep. I like because let me back up a little bit. I was I was I was imagining what night what um what Endowment would think about Vasher. Presumably, trying to get Nightblood off world, and and it just seemed incredibly unlikely and and honestly irresponsible of endowment to allow that to happen. But now, if if getting Nightblood off world is is one of her That's goals, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> then yeah. then she would totally be okay with. Yep, yeah, uh, go ahead, take the express line. Uh, if you want to go to Roshar, I can give you a discount on the ticket. You want to fly business class? Yeah. <laughs> Great All goes back to he will be dealt with. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love that line. <laughs> yeah. That's, it's just so cool that we have so much Cosmere now. And 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 the other the other bit that I I wanted to draw attention to in this one uh, is is obviously the fact that Nalthus is Shades Mar. Its cognitive realm is. Not deadly, yeah. Right. It's yeah. not. It's not made of mist. It's not made of destructive storm of investiture. Guys, what if it's no, made, it's of, made of red tape? Of rainbows, right? And clouds. <laughs> it's made of red, what if red tape. Red tape. Rainbows and red tape. 
<laughs> that's the motto. That's the that's the that's the subtitle of Welcome to now this <laughs> home of rainbows and red tape. Oh god. One other thing that's interesting is it makes me wonder uh how easy it is to get to Skadriel in era two. You've still gotta find boats across the mist. Which Well Make probably. It's more probably just the perpendicularity, really. Probably like, get easier getting in than being a native and getting out. Because once you come in, you know where the shard pool is. Yeah. Yeah. But then, um, then depending on where the preservation's perpendicularity is, it can be that might be you might just end up in an island in the middle of the ocean, nowhere near North Scadriel or South Scadriel continents. Well, or well, preservation uh, harmonies. Sure. Sorry, harmony. There now, would, yeah. could yeah. probably just be one perpendicular. I, I think like, I it, think we have a word, Brandon, that yeah. the pits are gone as a perpendicularity, yeah. and so yeah. is the well. But he's moved the perpendicularity uh, because he's obviously using it because we have con- at least one Chondra world hopper out there. Yeah. So he has well, it that's, somewhere that is, that's, yeah. that is accessible, but maybe not easily findable to natives so that he can control who gets off world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, we maybe do he's know controlling that. access. We do know that Chris and Naz are in, are on the yeah, planet. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they I mean they've come in and so, he's not stopped them. Do you reckon they've been there since Era One? Sorry, this, this, this yeah, they are. Reminded me uh, when you, when you brought up Chris and Naz, um, and I, I don't think I've I've recorded that anywhere. So, world first. Um, <laughs> when I was when I was chatting with Isaac at one point. Uh, I did. I did ask specifically about Chris and Naz. And hey, why, why are they looking for tools that, that talk to people? Because this, because this sounds awfully like awakened, awakened metal, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, his response, to the best of my recollection, now was that one, uh, he is not an authority on canon, so don't take this as a hundred percent canon. But two, he believes that it is because not not necessarily because they are looking for awakened metal or tools. It's that they are looking for weird things, strange sure. happenings, and things like that. And, and and just to be clear, this is pretty deep lore from a, a broadsheet in Bands of Mourning yeah. that is a. Uh, Looking for awakened metal, and it says contact K and N. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and so th- yeah. just just that's that's pretty deep lore. Yeah, would not blame you if you didn't know that one for sure. But but then that's why you're here. So yeah, <laughs> I I have all the broadsheets uh, framed in my apartment. Really, pretty that's cool. cool. Oh, I think I think I I'm missing the alloy one. I need to double check. Oh yeah, I have that one. It's pretty cool. Fuck you. Ian, why don't you do this next one? Okay, and I love this one because it's it's Spren, and I love. I know it worked out great. Um, so did the Spren that we know of as the Cryptics exist before Honor and Cultivation came? Brandon, ah, good question. No, Cryptics would be one of the forms of Spren that were a later creation. Creation is the wrong term, but yeah, questioner. Later development, evolution, Brandon, all of the sapient spren are later developments. Questioner, are they evolved from the earlier spren? Brandon, evolution doesn't work the same way on the spren, right? The spren were created more than evolved, I would say. Questioner, maybe cultivated? Brandon, yeah, cultivated in the crowd. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that makes sense, but... Very cool that all the true Spren are later developments. Yep. Post shattering, in other words. Yeah, all, all of the yes. sapient ones. Yep. I am only a little bit annoyed that Brandon didn't elaborate on the evolution thing uh, because a theory of mine, and, and it's not exclusive to me, I have seen other people uh, um, espouse the same idea is that the true Spren, the radiant Spren, are essentially upgrades over pre-existing spren so honor and cultivation came to roshar and honor's like i need some other spren up in here and he grabs a bunch of wind spren and and presses the upgrade button and they are now honor spren 
Uh, so oh, I was yeah, and put put more investiture. Into yeah, them. yeah, essentially, yeah. yeah. Um, which investiture leads to and develops sapience or at least sentience. So great. Uh, so I was hoping Brandon would elaborate on that a little bit, but boo. You know, why would honor and cultivation do that to the spread? It's like, yeah, I'm going to put investiture in there. Like it's uplifting, man. It wasn't a plan for surge binding. That was not the, that wouldn't be the plan at all. Like, it's just interesting to think about well, why they would do that. We know true. they were romantically involved. Maybe they True. just wanted children. When a mommy yeah. and a daddy okay. shard love yeah. each other very I guess it's kind of, much. Yeah. 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 Um also just so so maybe maybe they wanted, you know, a way to um order the shades I mean order as in organize, not 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 yeah. control. Um Shades Mar and that was them creating kind of an upper class in there. A uh, maybe yeah, we wanted sure. to make a society. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe they were just uplifting, because uplifting is fun if you can do it. Um, <laughs> you know, as you do. Yeah. As as yeah. I mean, yeah. Who who doesn't yeah. who doesn't uplift every now and then? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I do think the question of why honor and cultivation did that to the spren is a very good question and i'm just gonna go add that to my list of things to ask Isn't right it, it's, it's one of those things that you read is like but wait like but why yeah but, yeah because <laughs> early roshar in history there's a lot going on and that matters yeah probably you know i i agree i also i also think this is a very good question so because the first sapient spren were created before before the humans showed up. Yeah, right. I would assume so, yeah. 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 I mean... Because it still I, references, like, the old ones have four genders. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Right, that, because they're the reflections of what singers, the cognitive reflections of those, right? Yeah. And what they think Good of point. Them. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Next, where the Brandon from the Rifle Olympics, if I recall correctly. Have we seen the world hopping Kandra on screen in Oathbringer? And Brandon does confirm that, yes, I believe you have. Uh, she gets around. I'm calling it now. I'm calling it now. May Aladar. I'm calling it. I'm, I, I'm, I'm putting a flag Mommy in the ground. Mommy <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> like she uh, su- if- suddenly appears in Oathbringer after never being mentioned before, is mentioned like five times, and then just drops off the face of the earth. Like, okay, Ben, the real story is because May Aldar was a meme before Oathbringer came out. To that, uh, <laughs> she was because May Aldar did just like appear a lot and didn't matter at all, and it was so funny <laughs> watching all you struggle with that. It was it was quality entertainment. There, there's <laughs> also a running that. theory that the Condra might be real from. From one of the bridge crews, which Argent doesn't agree with me on, but nope. it's a possibility. Nope, it is. It is the more reasonable guess. But honestly, screw the reasonable guess. It's my Aladar. Go away. I'm, I'm going to disagree on Real as well because Akandra wouldn't be that obvious. It's going to be someone who we don't suspect at all and is normal. And I am picking her just purely for like not in universe reasons, just because. No, she- yeah. I- yeah, oh yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Rial, Rial is is a very interesting character, and I believe we do have a question about him at some point. Yeah, uh, we do. But my my stance on it is, yeah, I I I I really think he's a world hopper. I just don't think he's a Kandra. Yeah, I'm with you there. Do you have any ideas, Ian? I've you know I've been thinking while well, all of you have been talking, and I do not. <laughs> I don't either, but. All I know is that we have an Oathbringer category. Well, it's going to go away eventually, but it, on the Copper Mind, and uh, it's one of those. Yeah. One of those hundreds of characters. <laughs> it's one of those. We should do a or podcast it- where we just read the entire category. <laughs> I'm sure that would be just thrilling for the audience to listen to. Oh, oh um, what is it, Grace? 730 characters, I believe. <laughs> yeah, 730 Rosharans, that's what she said, yes. Okay, so this next one is the question asks, in universe, all the intents and shards and names, who names them? Do they name themselves? And Brennan replies, 
I have kind of imagined this is one of those things that they certainly have influence over, but obviously Odium thinks he that he's named something other than what he is, and I feel like these are intrinsic things that the 16 all knew. Like, am I missing this part of me? It is this. And it was less we and it was less we went around in the names, more like this is just what it was. Brandon was not very clear as he was speaking, so so this This sentence is very hard, so I'm going to skip it. And various shards are resisting that, but others are all like, this is what you represent. Uh, Billy then follows up, who's the moderator. Uh, Follow-up question. Would the entity that we call Odium refer to itself as Odium when it's honest with itself? And Brandon says, eh, I don't think that Odium is capable of being honest with himself. <laughs> <laughs> there are times when Odium calls himself, or has called himself Odium. There, this is, that is more out of convenience than the fact that everyone calls you by a name. But Odium is determined to change that perception. So which Billy replies, so does he genuinely believe in characterizing himself as passion? Brandon says, yes, part of him does. Which Billy says, has he always ever been Odium since the shattering, in which Brenner replies, yes. This gets right at a thing that Ian and I have argued about several times, I think. Oh, yeah. I've, been, I've been hardcore in the Odium is just totally you know, deluding himself with the whole passion thing for a while myself. I oh. am still championing passion. <laughs> Be- because, <laughs> because this feels like a massive can of worms Maybe we should do an Odium podcast. <laughs> yeah, oh god, yeah. You know, <laughs> we should probably just do a podcast that just is Odium. We we should probably do but that. But something that's that interesting, like, shard. Brandon does say that there are various shards resisting yeah, what that the is... others have named them. It's yeah. not just Odium. Interesting. Yeah. Imagine the survival shard is uh, probably unhappy with us right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but we're not we're not in universe, so that that doesn't matter. Uh, one uh, one yeah. Remember, nuance. Remember, Earth is not called Cosmere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, one nuance that's missing, um, and and um, that you can only get from the audio, really, is uh, in the bit where Billy asks uh, whether Odium genuinely believes that he's passion, and Brenda mm-hmm. says yes. If I recall correctly, there was a very long and deliberate pause during which the audience was going, whoa. And then Brennan's like, part of him does. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I usually don't listen to the audio itself. I, I, listen, I read <laughs> yeah. the transcript. I mean, that's a, that's a nuance you would only get from the audio. Yeah. Yep. So listen to the audio, kids. Yep. There's a reason that's we pretty. include it. Yeah. Yep. So the next question, uh, we saw that in one case that she felt was very important, Cultivation intervened when Dalinar was asking for his boon from the Night Watcher. You said that for the most part, she sort of lets the Night Watcher work, but has she intervened in other cases that she felt were important, specifically with Teravangian? And then Brandon dodges the specifics by just saying she has intervened before. I would be shocked to find out she did not intervene with Lyft. I think she almost certainly did. With Teravangian. Yeah, well, he's just no, not no. wanting to admit no, 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 that, I think she right? definitely did. I'm not sure about Teravangian. I am I'm, I'm almost certain she did with Lyft, at least. See, I, I'm very confident that like the Night Watcher is responsible for Lyft because it gets into, like, the sibling rivalry of the Night Watcher and the Stormfather, and that like the Night That's Watcher true. created That's something right. specifically to screw with the Night the Stormfather. That's right. The Stormfather was really upset with Lyft. Mm-hmm. Well, true. And, you know, there was also the fact that what Lyft was asking for, the Night Watcher didn't really understand. So Lyft asked a weird question, and then the Night Watcher gave an even weirder answer, and yeah. the whole thing is just sort of. Odd, Very strange, true. and no one really understands what's going on there. Yeah. And there, there's was... another question in there about the cultivation and the Night Watcher that kind yep. of clarifies this. Okay. It, and also, uh, just to be clear, when uh, cultivation meets Dalinar, uh, she said it's been centuries since she's done this. Oh, has it? So, okay. Yeah, yeah, but Dalinar yeah. would be before 
definitely before Lyft and probably before Teravangian. Um, yes, because Teravangian was 30, yeah. 30 something years yeah. ago or like 20 something. We, we know Teravangian was after no, Gavilar's death. So it has yeah, to have been in the last six years. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Of something else. Uh, so I just, I just wanted to make sure everyone was uh, on the same page and our listeners were on the same page with uh, the timeline of that. Like, it would not have been before Dalinar, but after Dalinar cultivation. Yeah. Could have done anything. Could have intervened. <laughs> um, the next one, uh, the questioner asks, so when did Kushiesh the Protector first appear off the coast of Erie? Brandon, um, a while ago. Questioner, about 2,000 years ago. Brandon, it's not a recent event. So, oh, clearly this questioner is trying to peg Kushiesh to the recreants in yeah. some way. And, and Brandon 100% sees through these shenanigans. <laughs> Definitely. As, as he always does. Well, usually does. Always does. Yeah, usually the really spicy things he just offers up randomly yeah. and like, whoa. Yeah. Like with the, the whole God, he's a shard. thing. Yeah, yeah. when we're yeah, trying like, to wait, whoa, pin him whoa. down on something, he dodges. <laughs> or just, yeah. you know, smirks oh, yeah. and doesn't even really dodge. Just doesn't answer the question directly. Yeah, he, if you've met Brandon, you know that smirk. <laughs> you know yeah. that smirk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's on the back of some of the books. I wonder if with Padgy, it was him going, hey, people are not asking me enough questions about autonomy and the Dromonaut system and Padgy, which is obviously weird. Why is nobody asking me about this weird thing? <laughs> well, I, I think uh, you've, you've asked him about this before, haven't you, Eric? And he basically has said he just said that to screw with us because we were talking about investiture in the Cosmere. And yeah, he just threw that out and like blew all our minds. But yeah, but it was uh, just. I don't know if he said that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was just okay. such a juicy piece of information to understand. And it's like, I, I, I think I've told, told people at the con this, you know, it's like when he gave this piece of information to us, we, we sharders are the sorts of people we look under underneath every single rock to find every little scrap of information. And when he opened up this thing with Pat G and, and the understanding that we don't really understand how the shards work the way we think they do. It's like, yeah. here's a whole new field of yep. rocks, guys. And we're like, yep. I, I feel, yep. I, I, I know, I've seen a few people on Reddit and on the shard ask why this Pat G word of Brandon was so uh, juicy. And that one oh. and the, the Reddit post he did recently have categorically changed our understanding of how shards work from before oh, with the, he said um, these things. Yeah. Yeah. With, with how different bits of investiture got yeah. shaded or, yes. or yeah. associated it's with like, different shards. The word is paradigm shifting. Yep. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Cool, let's not get it, too it just distracted like by that. contextualized <laughs> everything. Yeah. yeah. Good times. Yeah. It's Which a good time awesome. to be alive. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So this next one, the questioner asked, so if a person's holding a shard, someone like the original 16 people, some of the shards got splintered. Does that automatically kill the people? Or can some of those people still be walking around? Brennan, it does not automatically, because you can give up pieces of investiture and things like this. It did kill them, but that was part of the point. But there are ways to conceive of this happening that it wouldn't. Technically, what endowment is doing is giving up pieces Intentionally splintering to form these other pieces and things. So yeah, I like endowment. Yeah. Endowment's so basically, cool. this gets to the idea that um, the difference between a shard willingly splintering off a piece of their power and a shard being splintered. Yeah. Yeah. Generally, a f yeah. I think a full splintering can't happen until the actual vessel has been killed. And that, yeah. that, and that it's often an automatic, if the vessel has been killed and the power isn't picked up, it tends to sort of scatter out anyway. Yeah. Or at least the vessel, not necessarily killed, but the vessel not being part of the shard. So mm -hmm. during the process, maybe the vessel gives up the shard, that shard thing gets splintered. Mm -hmm. The killing of the vessel was not part of the splintering, if that makes sense. Because they, we know that people could, that vessels can willingly give up shards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so... Yeah. yeah, but and if we... someone is actually holding a shard, yeah, I don't think you can you can splinter it forcibly, um, yeah. unless you're you know the, the actual vessel and picking up without pieces. without pieces. damaging like the in, vessel. In secret yeah. history, Kelsier picking up preservation actually prevented ruin from splintering it. 
Yeah. Uh, presumably. I think I think what Brandon said is that him picking up reservation prevented something worse from happening. Yes. Uh, yeah. Which, which, yeah, it, it, it would make the, sense that, the hey, The description no... in there indicated to me that preservation was starting to splinter. Yeah. yeah that, that's just I'll, what I got from the actual text. Yeah. So this next one is one from Page Runner. He asks, if you need to bring food into Shadesmar, why don't you need to bring air? And uh, Brandon talked a lot about this, but the short answer is just uh, for narrative reasons. That uh, he needed people to be in Shadesmar, so he, he made it so air's there. And he also talked about other things, how, like, even with all of his work to make things on Roshar work out properly, uh, there needs to be some magical solution eventually yeah. to get these giant great shells. Yeah. So. Sorry, there isn't a more interesting answer to this one. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it, it works like that. I like the last it, line. It, the answer is, there's Aaron Shadesmar because I want there to be Sha Aaron Shadesmar. <laughs> yeah, the LDR. Right. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah. And the next question comes from Jafwa, or Jafwu, oh, yeah. if you mispronounce his name. <laughs> like I always do. Like, like Ian yeah, always too. does. Um, who too. asks, Gavilar's Black Sphere, what was inside it, and how many does he have? To which Brandon responds with, uh, well, it is what you think it is. And he had Great, thanks. Yeah, he uh he had access to several. And then and then he checked with Karen, who is his continuity assistant and and wiki maintainer, and goes, Did we canonize this, Karen? To which she responds in the negative. And Brandon follows up with, No, we haven't canonized it. I'm going to say raffle on the number, but it is what you think it is, and what the third book implies that it is. Okay, we got some crap to talk about on this. Yeah, one. Brandon, <laughs> let's 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 address. What do we think of what it we is? We don't know. That's the problem. <laughs> we wouldn't be asked. That's why we asked. It is what you think it is. Okay, what what, what do we Great. think it is? It says <laughs> it is what the third book implies that it is, and there's two major contenders for me. It's yes. unmade, or uh -huh. it's spheres holding void light. Well, let's 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 address the well, other maybe other less obvious issue. Like, um, I think I think it was again Jafwa because that's his theory. Um, who who listed out the options, or or maybe it was somebody else, and then he was no, he was... it was him. It okay, was anyway, him. so um, the four options as I remember them are well, it's just void light, right? We've seen yeah. void light. Um, the sphere glows a little bit, and it glows with this purpley thing. So maybe it's void light. Um, option two, it is a spren. Presumably a kind of a void spren, uh, which would so both of these would work well with there being a numerous spheres, but that he hasn't exactly canonized the number, right? Because he can have three, he can have five. If it's void light or spren, that's easy to do, right? Yeah. Um, it can be a fused, uh, which sounds really weird to me, and I don't believe that at all, and I don't think anyone does. I was and just it's thinking, not like that's what the third book implies. Yeah, but yeah. it has the tiny bit of supporting evidence that Gavilar talks about um, the gods of the listeners yep. when yep. when he's showing these spheres, and now we know that the gods true. are diffused. But most likely sure. not. And uh, the final option is it holds either an unmade or, if it's possible in some way, a piece of an yeah. unmade. Mm -hmm. Um I, I as you were talking before you got to number three there, I was thinking that something else that could be implied that the book basic the third book basically tells us is Gavilar basically saying, This is look, it's these are your old gods. And then with the book we really find out that their old gods are the fused. So maybe this is one of the ways sure. that the old radiance learned to deal with the fuse was by trapping them in spheres, maybe? I actually because we see when the fused body snatch the people with Venley. Yeah. Um, the fused mentions that like they don't fit in a singer's gem heart. That's true. So like, sure. I don't if they don't fit it in a gem heart, which is designed to well, hold spread, I don't know well, if it could hold, fit in a gemstone. But isn't the implication that it doesn't fit if the singer is still there? Like they fit fine, they just have to get rid of what's in. Well, there, I, right? the singer is not in the gem heart. 
No, 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 no. The living yeah. singer is not in the gem heart. Yeah. At all. Um, I would need to look at the exact quote. That that's a that's a, that's to, a weird but... one. Yeah. Also, what? I don't. Aren't the black spheres like fist sized? They're like the you they're like they're like pokeball sized. Where you could be like, <laughs> this is this is so like I'm making a fist um... shape. Like 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 this side, but then yeah, obviously normal spheres and gem hearts. Gem hearts are really small inside the bones, inside the chest cavity. Yeah, and so yeah, I I don't know. I I could see. I I need to double check both Oathbringer and Way of Kings, but I'm pretty sure the black spheres were bigger than your usual spheres. So I, I don't, don't think it mentions think. gem heart in particular. I don't yeah. think that is the case, Ben. Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, Where? in Show part me. because in the scene after Gavilar, well, just before Gavilar dies, he's, yeah. he's laying on the ground, he's impaled, and he reaches under his shard plate and yeah. pulls, I believe, what is essentially a necklace that has one of those spheres at the end and gives it to Zeph. And like, if it's, if it's a fist-sized thing, that would be like, you, you're not going to wear that around your neck. Okay, yeah, no, I get you. Yeah, that makes sense. I have the quote. He has passed into the blindness beyond, Dimid said, which is not Dimid, but... Uh, unlike the witless void spren you bonded, which resides in your gem heart, my soul cannot share its dwelling. Nothing, not regrowth, or act of odium can restore him now. That does not say the fuse can't... That doesn't say what you said, Ian. He can't it share it, a dwelling. Yeah, which is like, the body. Yeah, yeah, but like, it, I'm saying the premise to what you said is not what is said in the text. Yeah. So this I feel line like of thing, I uh, talking enough, about it in my interpretation. No, I I think it's importantly different. Like, importantly different. I functionally see no difference in what I said as from what you. Well, said. I do. Well, no, because. I don't know, I just don't think that means that uh, you can't put a fused in uh, a gemstone. If you can put an unmade in a gemstone, you can put a fused in a gemstone. Yeah. Right? Well, the we put the unmade in a very big... big. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, but like, there's nothing yeah. inherently preventing that from occurring. Yeah. Well, you just what can't I, share what I'm the dwelling. Is, is like, the gem heart is not big enough to hold them. And I was picturing the black sphere as comparable in size to the gem heart. I think we should probably go back to what we think it is. Uh, I think it's void-like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We you should, think it's void Because I don't think any one of us seriously believes it is a fused, um, even though there may True. or may not be at least yeah. a little bit of evidence in that direction. I think all of us are leaning towards uh, Ian. You just said void light. Um, I think it's a void spren. Yeah, I mean, but I don't have a very strong reason to believe that. I'm on the side of that it is pieces of an unmade in the spheres. Well, I just don't know how that would work. Yeah. Like, just thinking about, like... We have Sianat's foot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how a lot of things work. Well, yeah, <laughs> but, like, he here's the thing with the unmade. Yeah. So, David, Windrunner on the forum, uh has long had a theory that they're trying to get to buy Dimitrim's prison beneath Kolinar, and that's what they're digging, too. And so, maybe, like, Gavilar got this because because of Ba Dimitrim. Mm. Who's the best? But, like, if if what Br Brandon is saying, so some people said, well, I mean, the third book implies that you can trap a uh, unmade in a... Yes, it does. ...in a gemstone, yep. so that's the implication, and th that's kind of the logic they're going. But if so, how would how would Brandon not know how many spheres they have and not want to yep. canonize it? How would he have so many unmade? That doesn't make any this sense. This is why I'm thinking it's, 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 it's well, split up into pieces. Well, not all of them are trapped like that, perhaps. Yeah. I, well, like I said, well, yeah, but like you would know which of nine of them there are. No, no, yeah. you could, you could, he was pretty whether, casual about it. He hadn't decided on all of which ones were actually trapped. You know, yeah. Here's a couple that I know are loose. Here's a couple that I know are trapped. I haven't really decided about these others. It could, I don't know. If, if Gavilar knows what it is... I'm, I'm I, with I, Eric on this one. No, I see. The thing is, I don't think that, that Brandon not canonizing it says anything about uh, whether it's an unmade or not, because like I said, I believe it's pieces of an unmade. You could split, like you can, we know you can split souls apart, you know, the, the, 
uh, singers had their uh, connection and identity taken from them. And so, like, I, uh, the way I'm imagining this happened is that they did something. They essentially shattered an unmade and trapped the pieces in in however many spheres Brandon will decide for narrative reasons when we get to that point. It could be it could be five. It could be three hundred. You know, it's just that's okay. how I'm seeing it. Okay. Right. So this next one is a little bit of a juicy one. Um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> it's kind of, the question asks: Was Shallan's family during her childhood being influenced by an unmade? To which Brandon replies, "Um, yes." So the questioner then says, was it the, and then we can't really hear what's then said, but then Brandon Rich replies, I'll refer that, but yes, there is some external influence there. See, I, I feel like this wasn't new information. It really? wasn't a surprise to me. I, I feel like I've seen this before, but I, I might um, have been assuming at some point and this just confirmed what yeah. was already in my brain. I believe we've had word of brandon that um her father was being influenced by something yes okay. i think this is the first like implicit declaration that it was an unmade mm -hmm. and and all of that is obviously going back to um hoyd's first meeting with shalan uh where he tells her that uh the things you're fighting are not entirely natural yeah, good point. I, should we, I'd just like to point out that Shalon, the, the Devar family, has now been confirmed influenced by the Skybreakers, the Ghostbloods, the Cryptics, and there's now an Unmade involved as well. So <laughs> the Devar family, a little spicy, a little spicy to say the <laughs> and and now the Devars, um, the most influenced family yeah. on on Roshar, and the Kulins, the more influential family on Roshar. <laughs> Are joining yeah. forces. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this next one, um, Billy, our, our panel moderator for the Sandra track, had his own question and uh, asked, uh, "How closely does Adenalsia map to the Gnostic Demiurge?" And Brandon said, "A little bit." And Billy asked, "So not completely? I'm not completely off." And Brandon's response was, "That's not off at all." And Billy said, "So the urge." Not 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 the urge, but the demi urge. And Brandon says, "Oh well, I'll have to go read to make sure that what I'm talking about." Then, your answer is, "I will go and read and make sure I know." I thought I knew what I was talking about. And Billy says, "So there's the creator, which is the urge, which is the creator of this universe." And then he made this big hand gesture. And then the demi urge is actually God, and God is the one that creates its universe in the small hand gesture inside the larger gesture. And entities living within the universe need knowledge of that which is beyond what the demi urge has created. And Brandon's response is, "Okay, that matches pretty well." Oh, I do just want to say that this is a reverse read and find out. Because Brandon had to go read. <laughs> <laughs> or, well, so, at least Billy had to explain. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and he was very insistent on getting his hand gestures put into um, his, 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 his transcription there because uh, he felt that was important. Okay, yeah. Do uh, yes. any of us actually know about urges and demiurges? Is that something we can talk about? Uh, uh I, I mean, do it's I it's something to do with Christian Gnosticism, which I know very little about. Well, I mean, I yeah. went on Wikipedia and I read like two lines, which is why I'm asking. Yeah. I know that the great, demi cool. that's that's are what I would do next. Uh, so great, but other than that, I don't know much else about <laughs> the demi urge. The urge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you if you know more about urges and demi urges, dear listener, teach us. Please leave a comment. I do. Teach us. Yeah. That is interesting, though, that so from Billy's explanation, hearing purely off Billy's explanation, that there is the urge which created the larger capital U universe, and then there's the demiurge, which is God who create who essentially uses that as their playground and creates the the universe where things that live in live and in it. It and appears that Adenalsium is mapping specifically to the demiurge, whereas the God beyond is the urge. Yep. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Um, yeah. That I take maybe. Maybe. I take issue yeah. with the God Beyond just being a thing. So <laughs> well, he's he's basically specified that 
that's that there is a word in there that he said that this is something that is said across the entire Cosmere in yep. that exact phrasing, no so matter me, which language. It's not a translation. Let me rephrase that. So there is a capital G God that created the entire universe, and that is not Adenauseum. And then there is Adenauseum, which then kind of created uh, his own playground or its own playground. In it. Or at least, and 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 Brandon is saying, yeah, that's pretty yeah. much it. At least specifically when it comes to the people in the Cosmere's understanding of how their universe is built, he has out and out said that he's never going to actually address the existence of the God Beyond directly, um, because the characters within the world will never know. Therefore, there's no real reason for us for it to actually be imparted to us and it's just yeah. not something that he wants to specifically canonize yeah i, I Which think I'm okay with. that the implication here is that like there is something beyond adenalsium and what it created sure <laughs> how yeah. real yeah. that something is is unknown sure because even the shards themselves don't know for sure yeah adenalsium itself may not have known Mm -hmm. probably yeah, yeah. yeah. and and it's yeah. also not a question that the cosmere saga aims to to answer yeah at all we've got plenty of stuff to do with aiden Nelson. yeah yeah that's yeah. essentially the, the 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 birth of the cosmere universe is as mysterious as the birth of our own great well that seems like a good place for us to break we are definitely going to do another podcast on this we got more to do guys guess what time it is I don't know. Uh, too long. <laughs> it's, time it is. It's, it's, it's who's that cosmic character? Cool. So, for the listeners at home, this is the game where I have a character and five clues in front of me sent in via you guys. Um, I will read out these clues one at a time. The four lovely participants will have chances to guess what the character is. They get one guess per clue, and if they get it wrong then there everyone else gets their own guess then without... they die <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they i'll have... die i'm sick <laughs> <laughs> uh without having to guess that character that i just guessed cool so right we're only doing one for this one aren't we guys yeah yeah, yep. mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. right so this one was sent in by hippong and they were sent it to me via the discord so i don't know if that's their name on the shard i assume it is um right so, clue number one. This character is male. Nas. It is not Nas. Void. It is not Void. <laughs> frost. It is, <laughs> it is not Frost. I see all of you are going for big, big Cosmere characters. Yeah, I mean. So, I'm I'm desperately trying to think of somebody who's like not you know why we did that right is because those are the first names that jumped into our heads <laughs> yeah exactly. oh, which, which is fair name that I which is fair right yeah um this first one came out in my head i'll i'll go with um i'll go with the manliest man alive dalinar kalin it is not a dalinar kalin Oh, I completely messed what? up. Wait, wait, wait. Damalar? <laughs> Damalar? Oh, no. Excuse me? It is not. A... Excuse me? Dalinar Kalin. Dav Davilar? Oh, there we go. Davilar, we did it. The sibling. Davilar? Just. <laughs> Davin. Galavar. <laughs> Gavilar. Okay. Clue number two. This character had a romantic partner. Oh, had past really tense. Good for this one. Yeah. <laughs> Downer would be really good. This, but... <laughs> it, it is not Tanavast. <laughs> good guess. Kaladin. It is not Kaladin. Also good guess. Why are we always going to Roshar? Because uh, it's the most so, extra it's planet. It's the most recent yeah. book. Statistically, yeah. it has the most characters. Right yeah, now. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Mm, Elend. It is not Elend. Adolin. It is not Adolin. Clue number three. This character is a Scar. Ooh. Oh, um, oh, oh, it's Dox. Oh, oh wow. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Stop. nice. Wow. <laughs> Destroyed. Nice. Yep, that is very easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Once we get that, once we get that planet, Miss Bornero one. Sorted. Perfect. <laughs> I think we've always gotten Miss Bornero ones. I think so. I think the only ones that you've been stumped by are the the really obscure like Rochal things. Yeah. No. Uh, for the record, for listeners who might not remember, before Docs ran away from the plantations, he was in love with a girl, who was then taken by the the lord of the plantation and murdered. And that's okay. why he ran away and became a, a thief. And that's why he wants to rebel, mm -hmm. too. Clue and also do ledgers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Clue number four was this character is not an Alamancer or a Farouk Mist, and clue number five is this character dies. Yeah. Rip well, I mean, it's so Sarah one, so... Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty safe bet. <laughs> um, but, you know. <laughs> Unless you get him off. Well... Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with more Words of Brandon. And, you know, we're going to go back to more uh, in deep dives. Don't you worry. Yeah. Follow us on 17shard.com. Uh, follow us on Twitter or Facebook. Follow on SoundCloud. Subscribe on YouTube. Like, like our video. You can find us on iTunes. You can leave a review. And you can also find us on Google Play. We'll see you next time. Bye. Join us on Discord. But uh, send who's that cosmic characters to who's that cosmic character at gmail.com. Bye. <laughs> Great. Call.